Hey guys, this is a look at my Evo Star Skywatcher 72ED short refractor. Uh, got this from Astro Anarchy in Queensland, uh, Brisbane. Uh, thanks, Peter, for arranging that for me. I paid about $4.79 for it, um, which I think is close to outstanding value for money. For that, you get the scope, the rings, a short dovetail, and <coughs> quite a good little case. You don't get a diagonal or any eyepieces or a finder scope. So it's just sort of the bare bone scope and uh, mounting stuff. It's got a great focuser on it. You've got a two speed focuser with a 10 to one fine adjustment. Uh, when you're looking in the eyepiece, you can basically just rest your finger on top of that and just roll that back and forth. Uh, it's beautifully smooth to use. It's, it's I think, possibly one of the nicest focuses uh, I've used. And it doesn't seem to slip. I mean, I can, I can push that and actually move the whole mount forward, even with the camera on, and it doesn't slip. So, and I haven't, I haven't tightened that up at all. It's still quite loose underneath. So yeah, really, really nice focuser. Uh, optics are nice and sharp, uh, nice and contrasty. I bought this mainly as a birding scope, uh, more so than an astronomy scope. Um, I have had it out under the stars, um, just looking at a few planets and the moon. Um, it's pretty low powered because it's only got a focal length of 420mm, um, but it was very sharp and crispy. Um, really good, really good. Uh, generally I've been using an ED80 as my sort of spotting scope and this matches pretty well with this. It's at least as sharp and as, uh, as contrasty as the ED80 and certainly kills the 100mm f5 Acromat. Um, a few things you'd need to keep in mind with this. You'll notice with the camera on, I've got that reasonably well balanced on the, uh, the Vixen Porter Mount 2, but not with that. I've actually put a much longer dovetail on there and you would need to just be aware that you don't want the dovetail running into the focuser knob or the knob underneath there, which I actually got quite loose. So if you're gonna put anything heavy on the back of that, you'll need a longer dovetail. A couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, it's not a sliding dew cap, it's fixed in place. Uh, it's just a push fit. Uh, it's quite snug and firm. So your scope's always gonna be that long. Um, the focuser, while it is really, really nice, uh, particularly with the 10 to one, it's, it's I think one of the nicest focuses I've used. And on, on a scope that costs like 479 bucks, that's pretty good. But it only has that much travel. That's it. So if you wanna focus your DSLR, you're going to need a extension uh, adapter. Now I had, or I have, a 50 mil extension, but my T-mount adapter with a T-thread on it is on a fairly tall adapter. That's too much. I can't actually rack it in close enough to focus. Um, so you want to sort of make, you want to sort of maintain, like maybe if you've got one of those maybe a 40 mil adapter or a 30 mil adapter. Um, but yeah, 50 mil and a tall adapter's too much. Um, that's the Orion sh uh, field flattener for short refractors, which is about 51 or 52 mil, something like that. Um, that works out perfectly. That's focused on infinity there. Uh, and I've got um, plenty of um, travel for focusing, say, down to, mm, 10 metres, 8 metres, something like that. Well, if you want to focus closer, you can always just um, put an, another extension tube on there and you can focus as close as you want, depending on how far away you move the camera. Uh, with the other adapters, I run it with 
uh, a Williams Optics um, 45 degree star diagonal. Um, that's got a two inch barrel on this side and a one quarter barrel there. And again, that gives me Put a little dot on my uh, dovetail where the point of balance is, depending on. But that's how I usually run it with that. And again, that's probably focused pretty close to infinity. Um, and that allows me to rack out and get about sort of 12 meter close focus. Again, if you want, if you want to get closer, just either pull that out a bit or pull the eyepiece out a bit or put an extender on there, and you can focus it as close as you want. Uh, with a two-inch diagonal. My infinity focus with the 20 mil Hyperion is about there. So we're getting pretty close to the limits of travel. All my other eyepieces focus um, with both this and this. Uh, that includes a few Plossels, um, a bunch of uh, Hyperions, a 27 mil Panoptic, um, a little 4 mil Orthoscopic, and a 9 mil Lanthium, um, which is about my eyepiece collection. Uh, and everything focuses with those two. However, if you had if you had one of those on top of this, so if you had a fairly if you had something like that, you would run out of uh, in travel. So you would need to get a low profile two to one. Um, the other thing you could do too, uh, if you've got a fairly long bodied uh, one and a quarter inch diagonal like this, and you've also got a fairly uh, long adapter there with a, with a, with a, with a tall flange, um, you can run out of in focus there too, because that actually takes up a fair bit of room. Uh, maybe I think even a bit more than my uh, two inch. So if you can get hold of maybe something like a low profile adapter, and usually they've got a screw that fits in a groove, and this telescope doesn't have a groove in it. You could either file one in if you wanted to do that, or just take this down to your local bolts and hardware, uh, get them to get you, give them a, a grub screw to replace this. I'm not sure that's th three mil, maybe, maybe four mil, I'm not sure. Um, get a little grub screw to go in there, slot her on, do up your grub screw, and um, you've got a nice low profile focus there that all fits in the uh, in the tube. Um, the other thing is it's got a little bit of field curvature to it. You don't notice so much with the eyepiece. Some eyepieces, some of my plossels go really nice and flat, sort of edge to edge. Others, you get sort of 20% from the edge and things are starting to get a bit out of, uh, out of focus. Uh, so it depends a bit on the eyepiece. When you put the camera on it though, probably about half the center is sharp as a tack. Uh, but once you get about halfway to the edge of your, your frame, your focus starts to shift. So there's a bit of field curvature on it. Um, that field flattener, which is the Orion, um, that does a, a good job and makes a big improvement, but probably still leaves the last 5% starting to um, uh, get out of focus. So if you're after absolute pin sharp edge to edge, Maybe the Orion short focus one isn't the right uh, focus, uh, isn't the right flattener for that. Um, but maybe I could improve on that by putting some spaces in. I don't know. I haven't mucked around with it. But that's good enough for what I want. I'm not trying to get pin sharp images of, of stars from edge to edge with it. Um, <clears throat> certainly good enough for uh, daytime uh, photographs and birds and stuff. And I'll put some um, video shot with this, with and without the flattener up, so you can have a look and, and make the comparison. <clears throat> yeah, so to sum up, that is a really lovely, small, lightweight, um, damn good value for money. Uh, and if you're thinking about a little birding scope, that is really, really nice. I'm very impressed with it. Good value. To give you an idea of size, that is the ED80 by comparison. So a much bulkier scope, um, which is a little odd when you think there's only eight mil difference in the uh, objective um, diameters between the two. That's a 72 and this is an 80, but they've put that in like basically a four inch um, housing. 
So, which is sort of why I've gone for this because it's much easier to sort of take camping or whatever and, and use as my birding scope rather than cut this thing around.